So business cards, even though last year you probably didn't hand out many, they're still really important because for me it legitimizes your business, that you're real, that you have a, a business card makes it something special and you give somebody a piece, it should really say something about you and it should be special, it shouldn't be cheap because that's your first impression and you want to leave that as your first impression. It's really important, I think. And there are many kind of conventions and rules that if you break them, you do it on purpose or otherwise it would look like a mistake. Um, I'm just showing you here like a little bit just to know about the history. Um, before invention of paper that was from China around like 15th century or so and then in 16th century printing started in Germany with the Gutenberg press. In the 15th, like around the 15th century or so, Chinese um, became really good at making paper and that kind of drifted through the um, Crusades and, and all this travel on the Silk Road to Europe and they started printing with Gutenberg later on in the 16th century and that was really important to have paper because before that if you had clay tablets or animal skins to the only form of really recording something that wasn't very efficient to give somebody as a business card. So also with this trade, professions became stronger and they kind of had to advertise themselves. So this one is a business card for a hat maker and it might have been even made out of a, a wood print and then they used um, different kinds of inks or just like um, the, the sud, the dust from the um, fireplaces, that black that they mixed into the ink to print it with. So business cards are used as a networking tool and it shows your address, you give them something physical, it kind of legitimizes you. Um, these, these business cards were like the first ones from my friend Sayop. It's a company that makes advertising um, for Coca-Cola or really big companies there in LA and in New York now. Grew kind of bit, but they started out by giving these eye drops to people, get the message. And then um, you want to make sure that your business, cards is, business card is easily readable. Don't make people... Uh, work too hard to figure out the information that wouldn't be very useful. Like the one on the bottom there, um, I, I blocked the name, but it was so hard for me to figure out what this business was even about. And this um, kind of frame on the card also makes it hard to cut it exactly. There will always be one edge that's a little thicker or thinner than the other, so I think that's also technically not really smart. Um, on the top, that's a, a club promoter, and he he does uh, music backgrounds for commercials. So in a club, it's usually dark, so his name is really bold and easy to read. And then um, he uses a lowercase, which is much more of a subdued, kind of a stylish um, choice. But the most important information is easy, accessible, don't have to look too hard to read it and to understand it. And then I saw this one, which was a, a, a kind of a cool idea to put a lot of information in a small space because you don't want to fill up the whole thing with redundant stuff. Uh, another thing I don't really like are oversized cards. Um, there are different sizes. In America, it's two and a half by three. In Japan, it's slightly larger. And in Europe, usually when you get the business card, you open your wallet and you put it in, but at this point, if you have the oversized card, you don't know where to put them. Um, you have to either fold it or put it some other pocket that you'll forget about. I don't think it's very good um, to do uh, oversized business cards. It's also, if you want to bring your cards, you'll have some in your wallet. Um, if you have a wallet like this, then um, it would be good to put them in, in a size that you can put them in your pocket. And I did mine out of plastic because once I carry this around for a while, usually the paper cards get like kind of a little bent and, and, and scruffed up and the plastic cards always look fresh. But of course, there's another argument about not being very sustainable with the plastic there. But you can use all sorts of different um, materials. There's this kind of dog tag from Duffy Design. I got uh, this was in the 90s. Um, you could silk screen it, you could, uh, you could have an, an erased surface, or you could use this kind of coffee paper for that coffee shop. I thought that was smart. But there's like a textural thing that you want to stand out. Or this, this guy, he, he handmade all of these were like custom-made cards with uh, stickers, um, stamps, and different um, um, uh, punches that he, he did on this paper. And it was neon printed and, and like had all this, it was like a piece of art, something special. Don't make it look too cheap.
There's another um, discussion about having a vertical versus a horizontal card. So traditionally in Asia, you have vertical cards because you can write from top to bottom and the, uh, the signs are smaller, so you don't have very long horizontal lines to fill. But in Western world, we have maybe long names. It might be best to go horizontal with your name because you, you can use the space better that way. There's also more of a formal aspect if you have a vertical card as opposed to a horizontal card, which looks more like a business card. You could use barcodes now. I think that's kind of cool. I have that on, on my card as well. And uh, this way people can just scan the information into their phone or get to the website directly. Using special materials is a really good conversation starter. For example, if you stitch these cards like that, it would show you're very precise at, at um, drafting these ideas. I think a stamp is pretty cool. It's also really cheap. So um, you could use it also on envelopes, on cards, on any register. Um, it's, it's good to have it anyway. Also in Asia, you can use these little um, signature stamps. You could build yourself a monogram uh, and, and stamp it like that as well. Funny is good. Like I said, there should always be a conversation starter with this. Uh, and if you have a good conversation, <laughs> you don't want to bring out a stupid conversation with the same old joke every time. Uh, this is practical. You could have a ruler. Um, on my card, I have a um, uh, type uh, size measurement. Um, so you could think of uh, something useful for that. Also, don't overthink it too much. Like, make another one. Make, don't, don't print, like, a thousand cards because your information might change anyway. Your style might change anyway. Your title, your, your whole business concept. So um, just make a few and then make another one. Always keep, like, changing it a little bit. They don't have to be always the same. In fact, here, David Carson, he handmade all of his cards. The one that I, on the bottom here, he's a designer from California. And he had um, made, all handmade these um, back in the 90s. Uh, I think these are all like hand um, crafted um, and printed. Um, and then the new ones too, they are all different sizes and all handmade. So with this card, you kind of join that tribe of, of the style that, that you both like. Um, so it shows also that you, the connection to this person means something to you. And you can reach me with your graphic needs because you can see I'm able to do this on a card. You did something cool for this person, so maybe now they'll feel like they can reach out to you and, and have something the same. Maybe they want a card themselves. And you need to have a bleed on the card so that when you cut it, you see those card marks here. Actually, this designer didn't quite understand what bleed means because when you cut this card, actually, it would cut off the eye in interaction design, for example. So I didn't quite understand the point of the card marks here. But if you have colors that go over the paper, you need to make sure that um, it, it extends in the, in the printing setup so that when you cut it, you don't see a little white line. I see that mistake made quite often but this card I didn't understand at all because it wasn't the regular size it didn't show like it actually if anything it showed me that this person didn't understand what a, a crop mark is do something special don't use a font that everybody's using like don't go with the comic sense of course here even though you're a dentist and on the top this one is just overusing too many styles of fonts that's also kind of makes it look cheap and that that scripty font also, big no here. You don't need to have a name. You could just be a symbol, like Prince. And uh, at this point, you can also think about, like, what's your logo? What's your symbol? And your AKA, you can name yourself anything you can want. Um, you can uh, have a business doing illustrations with this. You can have a printing shop doing business aka as this and you're also known as or doing dba doing business as um these are just uh nice little cards and printing on different kind of paper stocks would be also cool as an illustrator of course you can show off your illustration skills another kind of business card is in your email at the bottom sort of that, that signature part of an email that's attached and then i think it's another good way to legitimize you as a graphic designer if you have a design portion of that it makes you stand out from the rest so so we'll get to that in another video